In this video we're going to have a look at Python's parameter passing mechanism. Consider the following somewhat contrived computer program and you can see here I've got a function and the function is called double it and it takes in a input parameter that I've called formal parameter. It is indeed a formal parameter but I've given it the name formal parameter as well which may be a, a silly name but I'm going to stick with it and on this line we've got doubled is assigned formal parameter times two and then we're going to return doubled so in other words what this function is going to do is take in a number double it and return it and if we come to this line we can see that I've got argument value is assigned three and on this line you can see here we have a call to the function and I'm passing in the argument value and again maybe I've chosen a silly name for the variable but remember this is just a teaching program so I'm not going to get hung up about it and then we print the return value so when this executes this gets the value of 3 this is the value of 3 that gets passed to the formal parameter the formal parameter is 3 multiplied by 2 which is 6 6 gets assigned to doubled we return the doubled to return value and we print the return value and we should get 6 so let's have a look at the runtime and indeed we get 6 and that's a reasonable explanation of what's going on here but it doesn't really tell us much about the mechanism involved in the passing of the parameters between the call and the function so what I'm going to do I'm going to look at this program again and I'm going to add some print statements to it as you can see here and you can see on this line I've got a print statement that's going to print the value of the formal parameter and it's going to print the ID of the formal parameter this line is going to print the value of doubled as well as print the ID of doubled down here you can see we're printing the argument value and we're printing the ID of the argument value and here we're going to be printing the return value and the ID of the returned value. Now this ID is an example of a built-in function within Python and everything in Python is an object so in fact if we look at the argument value we look at the formal parameter doubled and the return value they're all examples of objects. Now the ID built-in function will return the unique identifier of objects so this for example obtains the unique ID of the formal parameter where the formal parameter is an integer object so all of the ID functions in this particular program find the ID of the other objects that appear in this computer program so when this computer program will execute we know it will execute in an execution space and the runtime we get when we run this program is actually shown here let's consider the execution of this program one line at a time and let's consider the execution of this first because this will be the first line to actually execute now what will happen here is the argument value is assigned three now in truth what will happen within Python an instance of an integer class will be created that takes up the value of 3 and I'm going to show that in the animation as follows it's going to be an object that at its core has the value of 3 now this object will now be labeled and it will be labeled with this name argument value which is taken from the program statement because remember in Python when we talk about variables we really should be talking about names because all objects have names and this one has this name here argument value there's something else that we can talk about when we see integer objects and in fact any objects in the core in the attribute area of the object there are other members and one of them is the ID and that is the ID of the actual object the unique identifier of the object now for this animation I'm not going to show it at the core of the object I'm going to show it separately here and I'm going to say that I'm going to have this particular ID pointing to the object saying where the object is in the execution space because if we have a look at what is said within Python 
manuals, it says here, CPython implementation detail. For CPython, ID bracket X is the memory address where X is stored. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to represent that here in this animation as you can see. So if I now wanted to talk about the object, I can talk about its value at its core, i.e. the fact that it's got the value of 3 stored in it, but I can also talk about its ID as pointing to where the object is in the computer's memory space, or execution space as I prefer to call it. Let's now consider the next line to execute, which is this one. When this executes, what it will produce at the output is shown here. So we print the argument value, so we locate the label to the object. At the core we can see the 3, and that 3 is printed here. This is the ID of the argument value, and of course the ID of the argument value is a built-in function which goes to get the ID and prints the ID here. On the next line, we can see there's a call to the double it function. Now, here we can see in the brackets, we've got the argument value. And we said when we looked at the program without all of these print statements, that the argument value of 3 is passed here to the formal parameter. And of course, the formal parameter is then used here. But what we have to do is to say, well, what is the actual mechanism that's taking place here? And it's the ID that's passed to the formal parameter. And what I mean by that, it is this mechanism that's passed to the formal parameter. It's the object reference that's passed between the argument value and the formal parameter, not the value at the core, i.e. the 3. So in reality, what now happens is that this one object will now have two labels. It is the argument value and it is the formal parameter so we now know that the object is known to this area of the program and it is also known to this area of the program so in other words we don't pass this three we pass the pointing mechanism we pass the object reference so this variable called argument value and this formal parameter, which I've called formal parameter, both point to the same object. So the next line to execute is this one here, the first line of the function. And of course, it'll be responsible for this output. So when we print the formal parameter, we locate the label, we locate the value, and that gets displayed here. Then we print the ID of the formal parameter so we locate the label this is the ID and that ID we can see is displayed here if we now turn our attention to the printing of these two IDs we can see they're the same and this tells us that this argument value and this formal parameter must be pointing to the same object as represented by the animation now the next line to execute is this one here. Doubled is assigned the formal parameter times 2. Now we know the formal parameter is now pointing to the object that you can see in the execution space. And at its core it's got the value of 3. So 3 times 2 is 6. And 6 is assigned to doubled. So the execution space will have within it now another object as you can see here. And that object has at its core the value of 6. And of course, this object is going to be labelled with doubled, because that's the name of the variable. Now, this object is going to have its own ID, and I'm showing that ID here. Now, have a look at both IDs, and you can see the difference. They should be, because we now have two objects. They wouldn't have the same ID, because remember, the ID is unique. And this ID, we can see from the animation, it's going to be pointing to the integer object that has at its core 6. Now the next line to execute is this one here. And when we look at the output it gives us, we can see it's here. So when we print doubled, we locate the label, which tells us that we've 
take this six which is the value and we display it here and then of course we display the ID of doubled and this is the ID of doubled so we can see that that gets displayed here the next program statement to execute is this one here return doubled so we're going to return the value of the local variable doubled but in truth the mechanism is not to return the six that's at the core of this object what's going to be returned is the ID so this mechanism in truth is returned so the effect is that the returned value here receives the same ID as doubled which means doubled and return value have access to the same object so it's correct for us now to label this object with returned value once this function has finished its execution then this parameter and this local variable will be out of scope consequently when we look at the execution space we can see that we have this local variable labeling the object and we can see we have this formal parameter labeling the object but they were labeled during the execution of the function and of course the function is finished so it is not now correct to have these still labeling the objects so we should remove them but we can see we still have the two objects and they are labeled with returned value and argument value because we're still here in this bit of the program consequently this bit of the program still can gain access to these two particular objects now the next line to execute is this one here and if we have a look at what this gives us the runtime it gives us the six and this ID as you can see now of course when we print the returned value we locate the variable we locate the six and we actually put that here at the output then we find the ID of the return value this is the ID and we can see that that gets printed here now if we consider these two IDs you can see they're the same which goes to show that doubled and returned value at the moment of returning had the same ID because they had the same object reference to this object of course we can now see the program ends and of course all objects are no longer in scope so they disappear and of course the execution space is no longer relevant because the program has ended now you will often hear or read about parameter passing and you'll hear reference to pass by value and pass by reference for Python I wouldn't even try and think of pass by value or pass by reference I would concentrate on pass by object reference as being the mechanism because in Python you have mutable and immutable objects and when you pass these in as parameters to functions there's some nuances that you have to get familiar with so forget about pass by value forget about pass by reference talk about pass by object reference because everything in Python is an object and you've just seen that what actually gets passed is the pointing mechanism now in truth I've been showing some animations here uh, schematic animations when you get a little bit more advanced with Python we can look at the actual mechanism of how in fact variable names are tied to objects and what data structures allow that to happen but the animations I've shown and these idea of objects being circles with the center I think is a very good model and it'll also allow you to fit in an understanding of objects from the viewpoint of the unified modeling language UML which we will eventually cover in this series but the key is it is pass by object reference or if you like pass by object don't get hung up on pass by value and pass by reference because this can lead to confusion when we're dealing with mutable and immutable objects check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and the Google Plus circle that relates to these videos in addition why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video